Hello and welcome to Today in Space. In this clip from episode 332, we talk about two things. The Vulcan Centaur rocket, which had its maiden launch, that's the ULA's new heavy lift rocket, and its first payload, the Astrobotic Peregrine Lander, which had a whole bunch of payloads on it. You may have seen some news on it. We're going to break down everything about what it is, what happened, and introduce the news as we started hearing it as it came out. When we first recorded this, it was only just launched, and we end up giving you the whole story. So please enjoy. Let's dive in. Number three here is the Vulcan rocket. Vulcan is the new heavy lift option from the United Launch Alliance where they were able to fuse the Delta IV and Atlas V technologies together to create the Vulcan Centaur heavy lift rocket. That had its CERT-1, basically it's made in flight, and things seem to go really well with going to orbit. The BE-4 engines from Blue Origin were on board, that methyl ox, methane oxygen rocket with the blue flame, looking great with those SRBs, those side boosters. Something did happen to Astrobotics spacecraft. That would mean that the payload on board is also doomed for that. But the good thing is that the B-4 engines and the Vulcan rocket appear to have delivered it into the extreme orbit that it was requiring, which is this lunar orbit. So the good thing is that Vulcan has had a good first test and needs one more to come later this year, and then it will be operational to start sending more missions into the places where we want the most, like the moon. And we'll keep following that Peregrine Lander mission. We seem to have a very interesting mission where we may not actually get the rover to land, and some kind of complication stop that. So the latest update from Astrobotics this is update 8. This was released on January 9th at 4.36 p.m. on Twitter or X. It says, Astrobotics' current hypothesis about the Peregrine spacecraft's propulsion anomaly is that a valve between the helium pressurant and the oxidizer failed to reseal. After actuation during initialization, this led to a rush of high-pressure helium that spiked the pressure in the oxidizer tank beyond its operating limit and subsequently ruptured the tank. While this is a working theory, a full analysis report will be produced by a formal review board made up of industry experts after the mission is complete. All available data is being downloaded from the lander to support this assessment. ULA's Vulcan rocket inserted Peregrine into the planned translunar trajectory without issue. There is no indication that the propulsion anomaly occurred as a result of the launch. Next up, the Peregrine Lunar Lander, which we were just talking about on that maiden CERT-1 mission for Vulcan. It looks like seven hours after the launch started, there were some anomalies. Now, originally, when the spacecraft was trying to reorient itself so the solar panels could be facing the sun, which is how solar panels work, for some reason that wasn't facing the right way, and the engineering team on the ground was able to eventually get that worked out. But when they were using thrusters or on the lander to make sure that they're still working, way before they even get into this lunar orbit, it looked like they were leaking. And so there is some kind of critical loss of propellant that's happening here. That's not allowing them to finish testing. And it it's possible if they don't figure this out or there isn't a way to figure this out, they may not have enough fuel to land. And there's this image of the insulation that looks to be deformed. At first, I thought that was a fuel tank that had now, uh, the thin shell of it had now just crumpled in on itself, but apparently that's just insulation. Regardless, all of these payloads that were on this CERT-1 mission that are going to the moon surface, they were going to be taking the lander down. Uh, and this lander has been in the works for a while. I was reading an article where in 2021, they were planning on landing on the moon or at least launching to the moon. So now 2024, they finally get to launch and problems arise. It is a story as old as time in space where things never quite go as they should. But if we can learn anything from the historic Apollo 13 mission, there are solutions to problems that you never would have thought of that you can only come up with when it's go time. So for this team, the Peregrine Lander team, it is go time. Make the most of the mission. At the very least, again, Vulcan has done a great job and those BE-4 engines have done a great job of getting the whole mission into the orbit it needs to be, which means at the very least, they can still get some data out of this mission with everything that's on board. The latest, latest update for the Peregrine Lander is as follows. On update 20, which was January 17th, 
Astrobotic had positioned the Peregrine spacecraft for a safe, controlled re-entry to Earth over a remote area of the South Pacific. The team has been continuously monitoring our re-entry analysis with NASA, which indicates a re-entry path over the indicated area below, with no anticipated hazards, as you see in this image here on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. A safe re-entry is our top priority, so the team developed a two-step maneuver to move the spacecraft and change its projected trajectory. This feels more like an Apollo 13-esque mission where we really saw the astrobotic team step up. And now the mission is over. And if we look at this beautiful image, Update 21, Peregrine has been operating in space for 10 days and 8 hours and is approximately 30,000 miles above Earth, continuing its controlled re-entry. The trajectory remains on track with our planned path toward a safe area over, over open water in the South Pacific. The vehicle is stable, operational, and responsive. We remain in contact with appropriate government authorities to keep them informed of the vehicle's position and planned trajectory, which remains unchanged. The stunning image here of Earth from Peregrine was taken by the mission team this morning. The first attempt to take this photo yielded an oversaturated image, with the sun making the image too bright to see the Earth. As a result, the team precisely slewed the spacecraft to reposition the sun to be behind, hidden behind the thin payload deck strut just to the left of Earth, which produced the starburst effects on the vehicle and revealed the Earth's crescent. This image is completely unaltered. We dedicated this image to our customers, partners, and team who all stood through with us throughout Peregrine Mission 1. Update 22, as expected, Astrobotic lost telemetry with the Peregrine spacecraft at around 3.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 18th. While this indicates the vehicle completely completed its controlled re-entry over open water in the South Pacific at 4.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we await independent confirmation from government entities. Tune in tomorrow, January 19th, for immediate teleconference at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, when we will provide a post-flight update and answer questions from the media. You can stream this teleconference on NASA's YouTube channel. So, folks, a truly incredible mission that shows you that even in failure, there's so much that we can squeeze out of the lemon uh, with science and engineering for every mission that we go to space. Every time is an opportunity. You plan for the most ideal scenario, but you also plan and are ready to, in the moment, make a new plan if the situation calls for it. So the Astrobotics team, while definitely not a successful mission sending something to the surface of the moon, it was a successful mission in that all of the travelers, the different payloads that followed that lander, all got qualified in space. If you're new to space, flight heritage is a very, very valuable, sometimes overly valued thing in space. And what that means is it's confidence in the fact that if you have a piece of technology that goes into space and it works up there, you know that it's not going to fail from getting too hot and too cold, which things will do all the time as they get in the shadow and the direct sunlight. They also have to deal with the vacuum of space and just all of the things that come with being a piece of technology built for Earth in space or on Earth and in space. Uh, for many years that we've talked about this uh, a lot on this podcast because it was a, a key point for me, but flight heritage, uh, while very important, um, can sometimes be overly valued instead of just sending up something that instead of paying, say, $100,000 for one piece of equipment to fly one time, why not pay for 10 flights with something that costs a tenth of that? And then by the time you have you know, your fifth one, you've, you've got enough revisions on it where you're still stuck at Rev 1 if you've only flown it once. So in a lot of ways, in the space industry, this mission is a huge success because they took a failed lunar landing and they made it a demonstration mission where all of those people got data from the rocket they want to send into space, send themselves to the moon, the Vulcan Centaur, 
now they know how it actually worked and how things really work in space, how the rubber meets the road, if you will, in space. So now these teams will be even more prepared the next time they fly. And because the astrobotics team went above and beyond, people now have faith that this team is going to be able to deal with the problem next time. There still has to be, you know, an independent study. There still has to be something to figure out. Does this fuel problem or this valve problem affect the Griffin lander, the larger lander that they're going to be sending on the Falcon Heavy? These are all things we will find out soon in 2024, but a truly fascinating mission to follow, and we're super proud of the Astrobotic team with for everything that they did to, to get the most out of this mission and, and this rare but more frequent trip into space and to lunar space so congrats astrobotic team on making the most out of this mission and yeah pretty awesome we got we got peregrine home and everyone got data so it's a good day in space